I just finished Deadwood Season 2. This is a member request from Tyler. He's used four now to get me to watch the first two seasons of Deadwood. I'll probably watch the third season on my own. I really enjoyed both of the first two seasons, but just didn't have time to really watch them. But season two was really good. Those that doubt me, suck cock by choice. It picks up pretty much right where season one left off. Right away, we get a fight between Bullock and Swearingen, which is Timothy Oliphant and Ian McShane, who are probably the two best parts of the show. For me, Ian McShane still really carries it. His performance is just so good, and his character is just such an asshole, but he's so funny at the same time. And something really smart that this show does is the whole first season, you're dealing with kind of internal issues and conflict primarily. This season really focuses on bringing in a lot of external conflict. One of those being Bullock's legal wife and her son, who is his brother's widow. He married her essentially to have the legal ability to provide for her since his brother died in one of the wars. The other external conflict that comes in that's really big is Mr. Wolcott, and he's the representative of George Hurst. And every person throughout the season, as soon as they hear Hurst's name, immediately starts kowtowing to him because Hurst has such a bad reputation or is known as a very influential man who can be pretty ruthless to be successful. And it's funny because the guy that plays Wolcott actually plays a similar role in Justified, which also has Timothy Oliphant in kind of a small town situation. And that show, Wolcott is also trying to buy up houses in a small town and kind of invade their area. And it's interesting because the addition of these new people really brings in a lot of trouble. What they're trying to do at this point is because Deadwood is not legally under U.S. jurisdiction. They're trying to buy up a bunch of deeds for cheap by having a corrupt government official say that they don't know which deeds will be honored and which won't. It'll be a case by case basis. So people were like, oh shit, I better sell in case my deed gets voided completely and then I get nothing. So Sai and Wolcott are trying to buy up a bunch of shit, corrupt this government official so all their deeds are recognized and obviously the value will go way up since they'll be legally recognized by the U.S., and then fuck over Swearingen and everyone else who's not on their side. So that's the crux of this season. I really like how it's handled. All the characters respond how you would expect. And eventually we do get a team up between Al and Bullock, which is really funny and really interesting. This external force is kind of creating an internal sense of unity in the town that wasn't really there before, especially last season. And I think this is a really smart way to do a show. You can see how well thought out it was. The story keeps progressing. Arcane season two could learn something from this show. You don't have to radically change your formula. Just continue on with the story and it will still maintain the quality. And the show has some really funny shit in here that would never fucking happen today. And I know people say that a lot, but it would absolutely not. So right now your edgiest show or your most controversial show, quote unquote, which I don't really think it is. It's like corporate edgy is the boys and the boys in season two, you have a literal Nazi who won't even use racial slurs. And this black guy on screen that I'm showing calls himself N-word general. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say on YouTube, so I won't say his name, but Calamity Jane the whole time is like, oh, where's that little N-word general at? And she's like, I don't care if somebody sees me drink with an N-word. Like she doesn't give a fuck. And she says it probably 50 times about this guy. That's shit that would not happen today. If you can't make your literal fucking Nazi say a racial slur, you're damn sure not making regular people say them. Here you go. You can see the subtitles here. Just some casual racism. I do think that kind of stuff is actually important for the story because it makes the world feel more real and more accurate as opposed to now where you probably have a minority cowboy with the main fucking character or some shit. But what really makes the show is the fact that all the characters are so well established. You know how they're going to act. You know how they're going to behave. You know how they're going to respond to certain things. And the story is just really logical and the characters just act the way that you would expect them to. Things play the way you would expect them to. You can see where there's going to be issues before they start to happen. And then on top of that, your side characters also have their own stuff going on. So in this one, Mrs. Garrett is pregnant with Bullock's kid. And because his wife came in, he kind of pushes her away and he's like trying to figure out what to do. He asks her if she wants to leave town and she ends up agreeing to a marriage with Ellsworth. It's essentially a formality just to make her not look bad or like a whore. And shows like this, I think, do a really good job of portraying general historical accuracy. And it really is interesting to see how marriage is viewed back then compared to now as one of the elements of that. You know, in this story, Bullock, who's one of your protagonists, marries his brother's widow, which in most contexts today, you'd be like, what a scumbag or what a Hunter Biden. In this context, it's very easy to understand that Bullock did that to legally take care of her. And so that if something happened to him, she'd be provided for and she'd have rights to the land and whatever else. 
And the same thing here with Mrs. Garrett, where she's essentially being shamed into a marriage with a nice guy just so she doesn't look like she has a child out of wedlock. And obviously today, at least in America, that's pretty commonplace. So I really like seeing the different perspective on how things function and their purpose, just given the era and kind of what was going on at the time. And also what's really important for the story is once you have all your main characters doing their thing, all of the side characters have their own shit going on. So Mrs. Garrett has her pregnancy and she's dealing with this tutor from the Pinkertons. Mr. Wu is dealing with a rival Chinaman or a Celestial as they call him. <laughs> Jody Stumps is kind of tied into the main part because she's dealing with Mr. Wolcott. She's dealing with Sai. She's got her own shit going on. Seth and the whore have their relationship developing and she's trying to learn to be an accountant so she can stop whoring. Calamity Jane is really struggling with her alcoholism and kind of trying to get sober. The black dudes who run the livery are trying to get by on their own business and not cause problems in the town, obviously because they're black in this era. So you have a whole bunch of other shit going on and it just makes the world feel really full and like a real place, like a real town. Again, this is something that Arcane Season 2 could learn a lesson from. It feels like our main characters in Arcane 2 are kind of the only ones doing shit. Like Jace has to build all weapons himself. Everything revolves around Vi and Caitlyn, Jenks. And your side characters that get brought in are just kind of there. They don't really feel three-dimensional. And it makes the world feel small, which Deadwood has done a wonderful job of developing an entire cast of people. There's probably 20 characters you could say are pretty solidly established in this show, maybe more. And the way that violence in this show is portrayed, I think also does a really good job of just showing how fragile humans are. In the first episode, like I said, we get a fight between Bullock and Al, and they fall off a balcony and they're both fucked up. And when you see them that night, both their faces are beaten to shit and puffy. They can barely open their eyes. They look rough. Partway through the season, Al's really sick with kidney stones. And man, the way that they have to go about it, about getting them out and breaking them up is just fucking brutal. And it really gives you appreciation for medical advances. <laughs> the long and short of it, pun intended, is the doctor sticks this little metal rod straight up through Al's dick hole. You can hear the tapping of the stones on the metal. And then Al is luckily able to pee him out so he doesn't have to get cut open and have him removed manually. But his acting and just the whole procedure and the way it happens, oh my God, I was squirming just watching it. And it's not like somebody's dying or getting tortured well, in a manner of speaking, it's just hard to watch. And that's another one of those things that really puts into perspective how lucky we are with the technology that we have, including surgeries and numbing medicine and morphine, all that type of shit. When Bullock's son, William, gets kicked in the head by a horse, the doctor pretty much says right away that he's not going to come out of it and he's going to die. It all happens so fast and it's so minor, but it just looks so brutal because the way that it happens and the fact that he dies. Everything about the show is just very visceral. Even including things like seeing girls with the big bushy armpit hair <laughs> and all that type of shit. All of it just makes the story feel real. And it really gives you appreciation for how much work went into it. And kind of frustration that stuff today is just so lazy. Even something like this with the kid dying. The reality is, is this was pretty commonplace back in the day. And something that most people probably went through. I mean, obviously there was a time when families were having eight, nine kids hoping that four or five lived just so they could work a farm. So all these little touches throughout the story really make you feel like you're in that era and really put it into perspective when you compare it to today. Yeah, it's just a really good show overall. There's a lot more nuance here that I'm going to get into, obviously. I'm talking about 10 hours for the season and 10 minutes. But even if you're not super into Westerns, just the drama and the storytelling and the characters, I think most people would probably really enjoy it. And I definitely think it's worth at least checking out, even if you're unsure. The performances are all great. The sets and the designs and the town, all of it feels super lively. I would definitely recommend it to most people. I'll probably watch season three on my own, just so I don't have to make Tyler use two more months of memberships. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really good show. I've really enjoyed it. And I'm glad that you guys are using these member requests to make me branch out. Even the stuff that I haven't liked as much, I still like seeing at least just to watch stuff that I wouldn't normally watch, even if it's not necessarily my thing. So yeah, I appreciate the recommendations. Keep them coming. Hopefully I'll get to season three soon. If you guys didn't make me watch other stuff, I'd probably just be watching fucking Korean dramas and anime at this point because Hollywood is just cranking out so much shit. And there's a lot of stuff that I just miss or don't even hear about. So I appreciate the recommendations. For people who've seen the show, let me know what you think. Or if you check it out, let me know what you think. And I try to respond to all the comments that aren't just insults, like subscribe and all that shit. Thanks. See ya.